Holy shit. Are we finally here? Are we finally here? All right, some of you guys have been patiently, patiently waiting for this video. And I think the first request for the taunt video was about something like nine months ago by a user of the name, sorry if I'm gonna butcher this, Poha Caralho, right here. Thank you everyone for your patience and Poha Caralho, if you're still watching this, if you're still watching this, I finally got to your request. Uh, at the time, I was not ready to cover this topic, but now, now, I present to you guys of YouTube the best Brian guide on the internet. Part one, of course, part one. Hit it! <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter. And we're here to make progress, not perfection. On this channel, we bring you top quality tech and content ranging anywhere from in-depth guides and tutorials to just, well, hilariously entertaining tech and content. Below in the descriptions, you'll see that I have links to the timestamps for this video, as well as links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon page. So if you're new and you like what you see, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell. Hey, and if you want to donate, head on over to the Patreon page. It helps to grow this channel a lot. Now, let's get to today's topic. This is an intermediate video regarding Brian Fury and his taunt. Oh. By the way, this video will not be covering Taunt Jet Upper. That is an advanced level tactic, which I will cover later on. Also, what this video will not cover, wah, wah, sorry, is Taunt Follow-Ups and Taunt Setups. That's going to be in part two. This is part one. That's coming in part two. But what are we covering? So we're going to look at what exactly is Brian's taunt. We're going to learn how to properly taunt. Details also regarding full taunt, as well as triple taunt. And last but not least, possible button bindings that you can try to play around with to get a better taunt. So let's get to it. As many of us know, Brian has one of the best unblockable attacks in the game, the taunt. It starts up in about 28 frames and grants Brian plus 16 frames on hit of advantage, leading to guaranteed follow-ups afterwards. By the way, covering this in part two. This move is one of the best and most unique tools Brian has to open up opponents who are reluctant to press buttons, as well as opponents who love to tech roll. However, be cautious about using this out in the open, as during the initial frames of taunt, right before Brian lifts his knee up, any hits on Brian will count as a counter hit. Once Brian has lifted up his knee to prepare for the taunt, all hits will just register as normal. And needless to say, this also includes Brian's laugh phase as well. When he's laughing, uh, all hits will hit as regular. To execute taunt, simply press 1 plus 3 plus 4. This is an awkward simultaneous input because many of us are so, so, so used to only pressing one button or dual button inputs. Many beginners and intermediate Bryans are struggle to get a really clean looking taunt. Looks like any of you. Eh? Eh? Well, worry not. There's hope. You're just a little sloppy with the inputs and probably plinking or rolling your inputs just a little bit. This is perfectly normal to start and heck, I've seen even top level players accidentally do this from time to time. As uncomfortable as this input may be, we rarely, rarely have to press all three buttons in unison. That's because taunt can be button buffered. I'll gloss over this really quickly, but if you don't understand button buffering, check out the video in the upper right hand corner that I have right there that explains everything you need to know about button buffering and what it is. Again, taunt can be buffered, so if we hold down 3 plus 4 and then just press 1, we get taunt. If we hold down the 1 input and press 3 plus 4, we get taunt. If we hold down the 3 input and press 1 plus 4, we get taunt. And so on and so forth. You, you get the idea. 
taunt can be buffered. Basically, any combination of 1 plus 3 plus 4, you're going to get taunt. What makes taunt so unique is that it is one of the few moves in Tekken that can be cancelled at any point in time during the initial 28 startup frames. We can cancel either quickly or slowly. Really, whichever suits our fancy. This translates to shit like this. Yep, taunt dashing. Now, this video won't go into details regarding taunt dashing, but stay tuned for a more advanced video on it and other advanced taunt tactics. Just know that taunt can be cancelled with any input. Whether it's a movement like a forward dash, back dash, sidestep, sidewalk, or hell, I don't know, even jump if you want. Or rather an attack, it doesn't really matter. While taunt can be cancelled with any directional input, not all inputs are created equal. That's right, if taunt is cancelled with a single forward input, we can taunt again immediately afterwards. However, any directional input other than forward will turn taunt into Brian's 1 plus 3 grab. Additionally, taunt cannot be performed while in a running state, which will also result in a 1 plus 3 grab. Taunt can be performed, however, after a forward dash, but there needs to be a neutral input after the dash. It's all about that full taunt. If an uninterrupted taunt is performed from beginning till Brian begins to laugh, Brian gains a blue spark version of certain attacks for a one time and one time use only. First up is the Blue Spark Mock Punch. This attack deals 44 points of damage compared to the standard Mock Punch's 32 points of damage. And besides the damage differential, this attack also gives Brian plus 4 frames of advantage on block, instead of the standard minus 9 on Mock Punch. Out in the open, the frame advantage really doesn't translate to much because of the massive pushback on block of this move, but at the wall, it can be used as a frame trap because the wall reduces the pushback. As a drawback, however, as a slight, slight drawback, the Blue Spark Mock Punch loses the pseudo hard knockdown from regular Mock Punch. So opponents can simply tech roll instead of being forced to hold back to quick roll out of Mock Punch. Forward 214, or rather right left spin kick. The standard forward 214 string gets a significant boost in damage by gaining an additional 4 hits. Sounds great, right? Eh? Sounds great? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, if the opponent blocks the first hit and continues to stand block, we get nothing. That's right, zero, not a zilch, nothing. In addition, this string does not jail and can be ducked and punished after the third hit. What's that? What's that? Mm -mm. Nope, we're not done yet. If the string is not completed at any point after the third hit, Brian starts a full taunt that cannot be canceled, leaving him at something like, I don't know, minus 130 frames? Yikes. Yeah, I highly recommend avoiding this string. Gatlin Rush, up back 1 plus 2. Okay. If Gatlin Rush's tight frame window didn't make it hard enough to perform before, the Blue Spark version is even harder. Right. As cool as this move is, honestly, it's not worth the effort and the pain to perform it. This move is a natural string, however, so if the first hit connects, the rest is guaranteed. What's this? Did the opponent just slip out? Yes. The Blue Spark Gatlin Rush can whiff on the last two hits on smaller Hurtbox characters. See how fucking close I am to Yoshimitsu. See how close I am? And the full string doesn't even connect. The standard Gatlin Rush connects no problem. So why the crap does the Blue Spark version not work? Probably because it's too many hits. 
<sighs> yeah, just stay away from this move unless you're really looking to style on your opponent. Now, if none of these attacks are used, none of the blue spark attacks are used within about 12 seconds after Brian's full taunt, the blue spark option is lost altogether. So you'll have to do another taunt in order to get the blue spark. All in all, if you really want to use the uh, blue spark stuff, just use it on the blue spark mock punch if you're really utilizing or want to utilize the blue spark moves at all. And before moving on to the next section, I want to make a quick note that Brian does not have to finish the full taunt animation from where he laughs and then puts his hand down. All Brian has to do, all we have to do is hear Brian laugh. As soon as he does the laugh, we can cancel into any of the Blue Spark moves. Triple Taunt! Now, if you haven't played Brian before, this is probably a new concept. Now, Triple Taunt greatly increases how often we can land taunts on the opponent and is a mandatory, and I stress mandatory, skill to nail down for Brian's taunt game. Typically speaking, when we perform taunt with a single input of 1 plus 3 plus 4, no big deal. No big deal. However, I don't advise the use of just a single iteration of taunt. Instead of performing 1 plus 3 plus 4, we want to perform 1 plus 3 plus 4 three times. And we can buffer 3 plus 4 and simply press the one input twice. That's it. Now, see the difference here. See the difference between the taunts? <laughs> Alright, you're probably wondering, Peter, what the fuck? I don't see a difference. They look exactly the same. And on the surface, you would be 100% correct. Triple Taunt is a necessary a necessity because it increases the homing properties of Taunt. Check this shit out. See how we do a jab into a single Taunt here? Notice Kazuya's position when the Taunt completes. He is literally behind Brian. Now watch this. We do a jab on block and this time, this time we triple taunt. Notice that Kazuya is more towards the side instead of almost completely at the back. And here's a side by side comparison so you guys can see for clarity of where Kazuya ends up. This, my friend, this is the power of triple taunting. I realize that this isn't always necessarily obvious out in the open, so let's use a easy wall tech uh, situation to really just better show the differences between them. Here we have Brian trying to catch a tech roll at the wall with a single ton, and oops, the opponent is behind us. Bad times. And, and now we go for the same combo into triple taunt and instead, huzzah, our taunt hits. What do you know? Now, some of you guys may have heard, all you need is a double taunt. You don't need triple taunt. Wrong. Well, eh, sort of. Double taunting is good. Triple taunting is better. Notice how this double taunt here misses because the second taunt came out too quickly. It was buffered in too quickly. So it wasn't able to track the opponent. This, however, is a rare occurrence, however, when we triple taunt. So triple taunt. Now, another misconception that normally happens is that dashing into a taunt tracks tech rolling opponents. This is, again, both true and false. Sometimes a dashing into a taunt will catch opponents who are tech rolling, but sometimes it will not. It's inconsistent and just bad practice to do overall, I would say. Not to mention a forward dash, no matter how small, loses frames of advantage when the opponent is on the ground. Do not taunt, do not dash taunt to catch opponents who are tech rolling at the wall. Take a look and then let me explain. All right, 
here we have the same tech roll situation and Brian dashes in to taunt. We notice that the opponent doesn't tech roll, so then we go for a down four and oops. Again, here, we eat a spring kick. Notice this does not happen. Notice that this does not happen if we triple taunt because we don't waste precious advantage frames performing a forward dash, thus hitting our opponent out of the spring kick with the down four in time. Moral of the story, if you haven't figured it out by now, always, always, always triple taunt. It improves the tracking consistency. Uh, it improves the maximizing of frame advantage and just get used to it. So it's like more of like a rhythm thing. Button configurations. All right, before wrapping up this video, I wanted to go over some button configurations to help you land taunt a little bit more consistently and to make your life simpler. To review, taunt can be buffered, but from time to time, you will need to input it raw, as in pressing one plus three plus four simultaneously. And we don't need button bindings to help us get a consistent taunt, but it sure as hell makes things a lot simpler, doesn't it, sometimes? So, first up are those pad players. If you guys play with these, you know, something that looks like this right here. So Crossroads just zoom in on this shit right here. If you guys play with one of these, you will typically fall into one of two categories. You have standard grip, where you hold the controller like this, and you press the attack buttons with with your thumb like this right you press attack buttons with your thumb or pad players you fall into the second category where you hold the controller claw grip style like this right where you're pressing the attack buttons with either your index finger and or your middle finger something like this now first to address the standard grip players now if you play standard grip I highly recommend you binding R1, R1, or R2 to the 3 plus 4 input. This lets you combine one of these shoulder inputs with the one button here, the square button here, to get a taunt without having to mash your whole thumb over three separate inputs. This is kind of hard to do pressing three inputs. Most of us don't have huge ass thumbs, so pressing these three buttons with one thumb simultaneously is a bit awkward uh, and can be inconsistent. The reason I recommend R1, R1, and R2 here, and not L1 and L2, is because it is much easier to simultaneously input multiple commands with the same hand. This may be up to personal preference, but in my opinion, trying to time a left shoulder button input and a right finger press, which is gonna be your one imp Man, this is so hard. The one input here, trying to do something like this is rather difficult uh, to time properly versus doing something like this. Now, Second up are those claw grip style players. So if you play claw grip like this, uh, I recommend the exact opposite. So you're going to want to bind either L1 or L2 to three plus four, right? One of these buttons here, L1 or L2 to three plus four. Why? Well, you don't really have much of a choice, guys. Uh, it takes some crazy finger gymnastics with your right hand if you're playing like this to access R1 and R2. So like, you're gonna have to do some crazy ass shit like this. Uh, and even though, like I mentioned before, even though pressing L1 or L2 simultaneously with the one input is more difficult in my opinion than the standard grip players using R1 and R2, you can master this no problem, it just takes some practice. Last but not least, to my homies, you stick players. You guys that play with this, this shit right here, this is the bomb. All right, you guys have made my life a lot simpler. So, 
if you play with stick and you have at least six buttons on your arcade stick, which I guess nowadays is pretty standard, uh, at least to have six buttons on your arcade stick, binding one of these two button inputs that you see here on the screen, one of these two extra buttons to the three plus four input is going to be your friend. While it is significantly easier to press one plus three plus four simultaneously on stick compared to pad, it does make life simpler to have a button binding bound to three plus four. This way, you just have to press two buttons at the same time instead of three. If your arcade stick has eight or more buttons, uh, I've rarely seen arcade sticks that have more than eight attack buttons. But anyways, if you have eight or more buttons, stick to the inner buttons that you see here that I have in blue. Mostly because you want to avoid any extraneous hand gymnastics. Alrighty guys, thank you guys so so much for sitting through all of this. I know this wasn't necessarily the video that some of you guys were looking for. Um, sorry to say that this video did not have taunt setups, taunt follow-ups, etc, uh, etc, et taunt jet uppers. Uh, those will be in the next video. Aside from Taunt Jet Upper, that's an advanced video, but um, Taunt Follow-Ups follow and Taunt Setups, that's going to be in the next video. But this one was more or less along the lines of uh, getting your feet wet, understanding Taunt, Taunt Cancel, um, the different properties of Taunt, Full Taunt, um, how to input Taunt properly, doing Triple Taunts, as well as button bindings and configurations, yada 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 yada. So, that's the purpose of this video. The next one will be the one that you guys, I think, have been waiting for. Well, with that, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It is with no doubt in my mind that this channel would not be here today what it was without you. Your kind gestures and donations have truly helped this channel grow uh, and increase the production value. Well, with that, I'm Peter, and I'm signing out. Have a good night, guys. Take care. See you next time on the next taunt video.